Hi, it's Mrs. Miller again with AP Economics. Today's topic is absolute and comparative advantage. Absolute advantage exists when a nation or person is able to produce a good or service more efficiently than another nation. That means they can usually produce more using the same resources. In our example on the screen, you can see that the United States can produce 12 bikes and Japan 10. So that means that the United States has the absolute advantage because they can produce more using the same resources. Japan would have the absolute advantage in computers because they can produce the most. So that would indicate that they are the most efficient. Comparative advantage is when a nation or individual can produce at a lower opportunity cost. So let's look at who has the comparative advantage in producing these two goods. The first thing we'd like to do is compare the opportunity cost of producing one bike for each nation. To do that, I simply have to divide both products that each nation produces by the number of bikes that they can produce. This will get us to the opportunity cost for that good. So we can see that the opportunity cost for the United States to produce one bike is one-third of a computer. The opportunity cost for Japan to produce one bike is three-fifths of a computer. Once we find the opportunity cost for producing one bike, we need to look at the opportunity cost of producing one computer. So we follow the same formula. We divide both products that the nations produce by the number of computers they can produce. For the United States, the opportunity cost of producing one computer is three bikes. The next task would be to look and see who has the lowest opportunity cost. Well, I know that one-third is smaller than three-fifths, so the United States has the lowest opportunity cost in producing bikes. Five-thirds is smaller than three, so Japan has the lowest opportunity cost in producing computers. And that tells us who should specialize in each good. You won't always see opportunity cost or comparative advantage given to you in a neat little table like this. Sometimes you're going to have to look at graphs and do the same thing. But it really works exactly the same way. You would divide the amount of sugar that each nation produces by the number of pineapples that each nation produces to find out what the opportunity cost is for producing one pineapple. For Florida, the opportunity cost of producing one pineapple is five-sixths of a sugar. And for Hawaii, it would be five-fourths of a sugar. Next, let's look at the opportunity cost of producing one sugar. Divide again by sugar. And we can see that for the United States, the opportunity cost of producing one unit of sugar is six-fifths of a pineapple. And for Hawaii, it would be four-fifths of a pineapple. Now that we have the opportunity cost calculated, all we do is look for who has the lowest opportunity cost. For producing sugar, Hawaii has the lowest opportunity cost because four-fifths is smaller than six-fifths. And for pineapples, Florida has the lowest opportunity cost. So Florida should produce pineapples because that they have the lowest opportunity cost and Hawaii should produce sugar. Occasionally you're going to get a different kind of table. When you're given a lot of numbers, what you're really doing is you're just looking at a graph. And so really all that we're concerned with are the largest numbers. So don't let the graph intimidate you. All you have to do is divide by the maximum number of apples and the maximum number of pears. The opportunity cost of producing one apple for Alice is three. And for producing one apple for Bob is three quarters. If we looked at the other end of this graph, we would divide again by the maximum number of pairs produced by each individual. And one pair is four-thirds of an apple for Bob and one-third of an apple for Alice. When looking for lowest opportunity costs, we can see that Alice should produce pairs and Bob should produce apples because that's the lowest opportunity cost. 
And there you have a simple explanation for absolute and comparative advantage.